today's video is all about how I feed my garden in spring, when I feed certain plants, and the feeds that I use to really set my garden up for a lush and leafy summer display. So whether you grow vegetables, flowers, or incredible exotic plants like me, I hope there's some helpful tips in here that will really help you get the most out of your garden this summer. And the best thing is, it really is easy. If you feed your garden now and over the next month or two, Honestly, the results will really amaze you. But I've got all the products behind me, let's get into them. But anyway, hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. A big welcome to those new subscribers to my channel, as well as those of you that have had to put up with this face for quite some time. We're now in mid-March, where after a beautiful start today, blue skies, golden sun filtering through the plants, it's gone back to business as usual, dull gray and a few spots of rain. But anyway, now we're pushing forwards towards spring, it really is a time of year when you can start to get excited. Plants are growing away and it's nearly time to start thinking about our summer displays. So when do I start feeding my garden? Well, I don't feed every plant at once, but really late March is when you can get things going. And I'll show you some of the slow release feeds that I use at this time of year that really make it incredibly simple. Let's look at the feeds involved. And I've got to say, this must be the most exciting show and tell on the internet. Just look at this, look at the production quality. And I hope you appreciate you adrenaline junkies that have timed this video to come out on a weekend where there isn't an F1 race because there's only so much high octane entertainment you can take in a day, isn't there? So starting off then, we've got this Vitax 6X or six times feed. This is a feed I made a video about last spring. And I've got to say, I really was impressed by the results. Essentially, it is a super strength manure. So although manure is probably the single best thing that you can add to your garden, let's face it, if you have to buy it in, it's expensive and it can take a lot of manual labor to shovel it on and mulch it onto your borders. This has a lot of the same nutrition benefits condensed into a nice, easy to apply form. This stuff really is rocket fuel for plants. And if you saw my gun rail last year, well, let's just say I fed them once with this in spring when I made the video and you saw how big the plants got. It is amazing stuff. This is blood, fish and bone, which I've got to say is one of the most traditional, highly regarded feeds that you can apply to your garden. This is a feed which is just a great general purpose feed. And one of the ways you can tell that, if we look down here, all these scary numbers, you might not be familiar with NPK, but NPK literally stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, just ignore my fingers pointing, and then potassium, which is the K. What those essentially mean, nitrogen is what leads to lush leafy growth. So if you grow vegetables, fantastic. And for us tropical style gardeners, nitrogen really is what pushes out those big leaves on bananas, cannas, tetrapanax, ricinus. If you want big leaves, nitrogen's the way forward. Phosphorus then is the top ingredient for flowers, fruits, and vegetables. So great for cannas, a great multi-purpose feed for any flowering plant in your garden. And then potassium, the K, that is more for root growth and overall plant health. With the right mixture of all three of these at the right times in the year, your plants will not only be more healthy, productive, but also tougher and more resilient to periods of stress through the year. So here, looking at this blood, fish and bone, you'll notice the percentages, we've got five, five and six. So pretty much that is a balanced fertilizer. It's all classes of ratio. Whereas something like these chicken manure pellets, which are what I always use at our old garden, fantastic product. You can see it's slightly skewed towards the nitrogen end for 3.6, 2.9. So essentially what you need to know, if you're growing a plant with big lush leaves and you want to get it to grow as fast as possible, prioritize slow release feeds that have got more nitrogen in them. And for plants which you don't want to rock it away, plants that you just want steady, healthy, strong growth on, Something with a little bit more balance to it is the way forwards. But ultimately, all of these feeds are great to apply in spring. They're all slow release, and let me tell you a bit more about when I apply them. The plants are generally quite slow to get started in a tropical style garden, with some of the tender plants only going out in May. So I generally try to stagger my feed in to suit when certain plants grow. But if you want a good general purpose feed to scatter around your garden now, whether it comes to palms, formiums, or lush summer plants, you can use the blood, fish, and bone. The one thing I would say is follow the manufacturer's instructions. See what it says in the back of the packet. If it says a handful to a square meter or a square yard, stick to a handful. One thing with feeding is more doesn't necessarily get you better results. It can with some plants, particularly in summer, when it comes to bananas, cannas, gingers, the really greedy plants that just thrive on a huge amount of nutrients and water. But for most plants, particularly the ones that stay in the ground all year, palms, trees, shrubs, plants like that, 
having the right amount of nutrients available at the right time really is the way forward for healthy, sustainable growth. You don't want to give them too much fertilizer or too much nitrogen in particular, because all that'll happen is you'll get loads of soft growth pushing out there and it won't look great and it potentially won't withstand winter cold as well. So what do I do at this time of year then? Well, there's no point feeding a lot of the plants behind me here before we get to late March. With the palms in particular, and I will be looking at a palm specific slow release feed later on, with those, they don't really start growing until the soil warms up, which can be probably early to mid April. And often at this time of year, you might notice some of the leaves starting to yellow, particularly the older ones. And that can often be because the soil has been that cold for that long, they struggle to get the nutrients up. So there's no point wasting fertilizer feeding these plants when the soil isn't there to support the growth. And it's just the same whether you're growing flowers, vegetables, perennials now are only just pushing through the soil. So really there's no point feeding before this point, but it is a great time now to start doing things. So let me show you a few specific examples around the garden and how I'll feed them. So look at this border here as an example, whether you grow exotic plants or not, it's essentially a collection of what you might class as trees, shrubs, and mixed planting. A lot of these plants are evergreen and most of them stay in the ground all year. They're not bedding plants for summer. So when it comes to feeding these, as we're lucky enough to have quite a big long garden, I couldn't possibly afford to buy the right specific feed for every single plant. And with some that isn't available. But here, my priority is to feed the soil, not the plants. And what that means is if you can create a rich, fertile soil, high in bacteria, fungi, all the mycorrhizal activity down there, then you can create a soil that supports a lot of healthy plant life and resilient plant life too. So I tend to prioritize the natural or organic based feeds. Blood, fish and bone is a really great economical feed that lets you feed large areas of your garden without spending a huge amount of money. I think it's less than 30 pounds for that 25 kilo sack. So what I'll essentially do is literally scatter handfuls around this mixed plant in here, just something like that really. I don't put a huge amount of time into it. And one top tip is to do it before a rainy day. And that way you cut down on the scent invading your garden and it also washes into the soil just a little bit quicker. So for an area like this, I would certainly prioritize blood, fish and bone. A nice mixture of balanced nutrients to set these plants up. When would I do that? Late March, early April. For some of the more tropical style exotics that I grow here, such as these Musa Baju bananas, as you can see, they're not looking especially impressive yet. And really, there isn't much point feeding these before mid-April or so, depending on where you are in the country. But certainly for us up here, March, yes, they're growing a little bit. They're pushing new leaves out. But really, the temperatures just aren't there for sustained and fast growth. So there's no point feeding. And I suppose really, all that overfeeding them now at this time of year would do, it just cause them to push out more of this soft leafy growth, which will get battered by the storms and probably frosts that we've still got yet to come this year. Hopefully not, but you know what I mean. But when it comes to other exotics, which do start a little bit earlier, in particular, my mighty gunneras here, these are a plant that obviously starts pushing out leaves before March is here. So I tend to feed these about now. And in fact, so that'll be my job this weekend. And for these, the gunnera, I want to prioritize big leaves and a lot of growth, which might end up being a little bit of shoot myself in the foot when they get too big a block this area here. <laughs> Obviously with a plant you're primarily growing for the huge leaves, nitrogen has to be a big part of the equation. And last year I used the Vitax feed and quite liberally scattered it all around here. But in the past I've had great success with chicken manure pellets. Anything that's high in nitrogen, quick and easy to apply, it will lead to these lush, vibrant lime green leaves getting bigger and bigger by the day. Whilst I don't recommend overfeeding shrubs, trees, plants like the palms over there, when it comes to these gunnera where they're tough, they're hardy, and they are all about the big leaves, you can certainly apply a little bit more than the instructions say. So whether you use the Vitax 6X feed or go for the chicken manure pellets, make sure you apply plenty around the plant. If you go to around 500 mil, two foot around the plant, scatter a good few handfuls around there, it really does set them up for the season. A good few handfuls of blood, fish and bone can work wonders for greedy plants like bamboo. But then I follow that up in summer with a lot of chicken manure pellets to really help those rhizomes size up and get even bigger growth to look forward to next year. When it comes then to the real summer bedding plants, the tender tropical beauties, such as Insetti ventricosum morellii, You'll have to use your imagination and pretend there's one here. 
I know you're now looking back at that display, that was the highlight of the video. But if you've got an Isetti, plants like Coleus, the summer plants, the bedding ones that generally go out early to mid-May, I personally don't think there's any point feeding that soil before that point. So what I do is generally get the plants in the ground once they're hardened off and then apply the slow release feed to the soil around them. And that way you're not literally digging through all the fertilizer you put in there and it'll be ready to feed those plants the second that they're settled in. So that's generally how I apply slow release feeds from March through to May. And it really is as simple as when the plants start growing. So for the tough, hardy and usually evergreen plants that stay in the ground all year, you can start feeding them late March to early April depending on the plant. When it comes to plants like Gunnera, the second they start growing, you can throw feed at them. Just be warned though, they will get big and they'll get big quickly. And then when it comes to the slightly later, more tropical plants like Musa Baju, those really, I personally don't start feeding them until around mid-April, when hopefully we'll have some beautiful spring warmth, the soil will be warmer, and the plants will be ready to get growing again. To simplify how I feed the whole garden here, I could summarize it as a three-step process. The first priority when we moved in, especially when I created these new borders here, was to add a good thick mulch or layer of organic matter. So that can be well-rotted farmyard manure, it can be soil conditioner, it can be mushroom compost. Whether you source it locally, get it in bulk bags or buy smaller bags from B&Q places like that, it's the best way to actually improve the long-term fertility and the structure of the soil. That sets it up really for long-term growth. Nowadays, when it comes to spring, I look forward to, well, probably not look forward, one of the things I do in spring is prioritize applying these slow release feeds. Actually, no, I do look forward to it because it means summer's nearly here and the plant's actively growing. These slow release feeds might not have the same amount of overall goodness as a full bulk bag of Rami Abbey or something like that, but they have a high amount of nutrients concentrated into that bag. So they're easy to apply and it's lots of great stuff for the plants. So whilst applying a good mulch of organic matter like well-rotted manure, it's probably the human equivalent of, we'll say, a Sunday dinner. It's got everything you need in there to set you up for long-term growth, keep you full for a good long time. These slow-release feeds are slightly more concentrated. They give the nutrients when you want them and you get lots of good growth in summer. So we'll say something like a takeaway which definitely leaves you full for not quite as long as you want and you might end up bigger than you expected. When it comes to summer, for the really greedy plants like canners and bananas, I generally top up the chicken manure pellets, something like that, to give them even more nitrogen. And then I mix up some soluble feeds, which generally is a combination of miracle Grow to give them plenty of nutrients to that specific plant, potentially liquid seaweed as a nice growth stimulant, and maybe even tomato feed, things like that. Generally speaking, whatever feeds are got around, you can give them to canners and bananas and they will take it in and they will grow big. So essentially that isn't the same as a full meal. It's probably the equivalent of a protein shake or some vitamins. So whilst it could keep you alive, it really is all about huge amounts of nutrients delivered quickly to a plant. So that really is my three-step process. And I shouldn't need to say it, but really prioritize getting that good diet, that good Sunday roasting first. If you can look after the soil, it really will help look after your plants. And then when this time of year comes around, add that slow release feed, give them a cheeky takeaway, let them enjoy that and get the most out of them this summer. So whatever plants you grow in your garden, whether it's trees, shrubs, perennials, flowers, fruit, or huge exotic plants, at this time of year in spring, it really is as simple as supporting the growth of plants once it begins and choosing the right fertilizer to match up the growth that you want from that plant. When it comes to certain plants in the garden, there's often specific feeds available. And it's well worth doing a bit of a Google to find out whether a lot of people use those or whether they're just overpriced little bottles or something you don't really need. But there is one plant in my garden or one group of plants, the palms, that for me, justify using a specific specialist fertilizer. The one that I've used the past couple of years is this slow release palm feed. This one is from Hardy Palms and it's their slow release feed. It really is great for setting up your palms to summer growth. And this might sound like a sponsor video, it isn't. I don't even get any affiliate revenue from the link in the description below. I'm just sharing it because it's a great product, something that I have used and something that I will continue to use. Now, at our old house, when I grew a lot of palms in pots, I generally mixed up a mixture of palm focus, palm booster, and a bit of organic seaweed as a sort of growth stimulant. And that was a heady cocktail that I fed the palms with through the summer months. But fortunately, that can get quite expensive. Whilst I still use that now for a couple of my more unusual and rare palms, when it comes to a lot of the palms in my garden, like these trachycarpus here, they've been in the ground a few years now. The soil here is quite good anyway. So all I really need to do is give them a specific feed to make sure the micronutrients and trace elements and minerals 
are up to scratch and the leaves looking as healthy as possible. And that's where something like this comes in. And what you might find is, although this is 20 pounds a tub compared to 10 pounds for a bottle of the other stuff, this lasts a long time, it's really quick to apply and you can feed so many plants in your garden on these tubs. So for me, with our one year old, often taking a lot of my time and money away, something like this, which is very economical and again, very quick to apply, Honestly, slow release feeds to me really have been the way forward. As we head closer to some then, I'm sure you'll see loads of people asking in the various Facebook groups about the right feeds to give certain plants. And I will be giving some more information closer to the time on what I do to get the biggest leaves, the most impressive tropical style summer bedding plants possible. But really that is an absolute minority of my feeding. Most of the work that I do to feed my garden plants and improve the soil is done in spring. It's done now and it's done with those slow release feeds. So whether you want to use a more general purpose slow release feed like blood fish and bone to quickly, efficiently and economically feed large areas of your garden and multitude of different plants, whether you want to use a higher nitrogen feed like the Vitax 6X or chicken manure pellets to give an extra boost to those big leaves in your garden, or whether you want to go for something more specific like the palm slow release feed from Hardy Palms, really now as we head into April is the best time to apply it. And that way, no matter how lazy, forgetful, inefficient you are in summer, you've got it done now and those plants will be fed. But it really is all about feeding the soil. This is something where, if you haven't seen my video looking at Dr. Simon Alpin's incredible Sheffield Jungle Garden, I'll put a link to it in the description below. You should definitely check it out. He really emphasizes the absolute importance of feeding the soil. If you feed the soil by using organic or naturally derived fertilizers like this, you create so much fertility, long-term structure, the worms drag it down, the plants are fed for year after year. Whereas if you just use a lot of synthetic feeds, then that is pretty much fed and it's gone, that's it. And they can often have a detrimental effect on the life below the soil. So using these kind of feeds, is not just economical or quick, but it really is the best long-term plan to get a healthy, lush, vibrant garden, not just this summer, but every year going forwards. So thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you want more specific plant feeding advice, then feel free to ask or I might put another video together as we get closer to summer. Thanks for watching. It's about to rain, so I'm heading inside. See you later.